Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC. We're here to do some fun stuff with our uh, Vocal 5 Pro here. I've got the uh, ATC, which I'm using in manual tool change mode using a button, um, but I'm also using it in manual motor control, as in there's a flip, there's a manual override switch on the side of our VFD, which allows me to control the motor itself, the run, start, the RPMs, just like you would a normal uh, uh, palm router. But what I want to do is I want to hook up that VFD directly to my Warthog controller so that my software can control the speed of the motor itself. For a Shipoko 5 Warthog controller, you're going to get this little thing called a pigtail. This allows you to plug the control cable into your Warthog. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's zoom in. I'll, I'll unplug some things. We'll zoom in and I'll show you how I get this plugged in and then how we're going to uh, control it from the software. So let's, uh, let's dig into it. First, we're gonna set our cables aside and we need to pull basically all of our uh, wires off of the controller. So we need to unplug everything. Of course, pull the power. We've already got it turned off. And I'm going to disconnect the machine itself, which is attached with these two wires. And then that frees up our controller so we can uh, open it up and let's, uh, let's uh, work on our input here. All right, here I have the uh, controller itself. We're going to flip this over. Taking a two millimeter hex wrench, I'm going to remove all of the screws. Flip that over. And on the uh, top part of the cover, you're going to find the actual Warthog controller itself. Uh, careful not to touch this big metal thing. That's actually a heat sink from the other side. Of course, we've got our power supply wire coming over here to a Meanwell power supply. But we've got our uh, spindle cable, our pigtail right here. And you'll notice that it's coming in from, uh, in from that connector, in and down through the two wire pin over to this Molex which plugs right into the six pin header. If you're holding the controller, you can see it from up here at the top. You've got the warthog right there. Um, from the uh, pigtail we've got here, goes into the six pin header. There's three, two rows of three from left to right. Um, we're gonna be connecting into the second row, the first two pins with the uh, black on the left and the red in the middle pin. Um, and then the right, the far right pin is going to be empty along with the top row that's going to be empty. So that's where we're going to plug that into and we're going to hook it right up. I went ahead and drilled a hole into my controller. I would not recommend it unless you know that you are beyond the uh, warranty um, level. This involves modifying your machine. So if you don't want to modify the machine just yet, um, just plug that in, run these two wires um, underneath the cover and, and just plug it in from the side. Once you're, once you're comfortable, then you can go ahead and just drill a hole right through it and put the uh, connector, attach the connector. You just need a, a 12 millimeter hole and that's gonna connect right there. And that's what I've done um, on the controller. So now I'm just gonna put this back together. All right, so here we are with our uh, controller. I've got it already mounted into my, um, right onto the top panel. Plug this in and let's put the machine, plug the machine in. And I've got my USB controller. I've got the e-stop. The power. And now we're ready for our next step, which is our controller. So I've got a control cable right here. This is the six pin to six pin wire. We're gonna take the control cable, just plug it right into our uh, ports there, tighten that down, and then we're gonna run it over to our VFD. Okay, so I've got my VFD here. Of course, this is a uh, ATC, so I've got a pneumatics enclosure over here, but I'm gonna run my little control cable up and over and around so that the wires are out of the way of anything I might be doing. And I'm gonna plug it into the PWM port here on the, uh, on the left side of the VFD. Okay, so I've actually finished all of the wiring. Now it's just a matter of configuring the uh, carbide motion 
and um, so that it knows that it has a spindle and of course the VFD and make sure everything is all kind of flowing and, and working correctly. Um, I've got my, uh, I just need to initialize my machine and I basically reset it up. See, I've pulled up Carbide Motion. I have not connected to the machine yet. Uh, what we need to do is go into set up new machine. So we need to tell the machine that we have got a spindle. Step. This screen is the most important. Uh, the spindle setup, we've got a, a spindle. So if you've had carbide router configured, change that to a VFD spindle. Hit save settings, hit finish, um, and then you can connect to your, to your machine and run the initialization program. We've got a bit in there already, so we're just gonna hit resume and allow it to measure. All right, our machine's all set up. Now, we can run a few tests if we'd like. Let's, uh, let's jog the machine over here so we can actually see it. Rapid position, let's jump back here to the, to the back northwest corner. It's flipped down to um, automatic mode, and I've got a special programming, which I'll refer to that video here um, right now, but it will allow you to configure it so that if you tell it to run at all and the voltage gets up on that PWM line up to a certain amount, it will automatically start the uh, spindle for us. So to test that, we're going to hit and go to the MDI screen. If you don't have that enabled, click settings and on the first tab for options, check that box that says enable MDI. That'll give you the MDI tab up at the top, which you can click, and it'll pull up this basically this long thing here, this long uh, dialogue here. Now, what I like to do is pull up the settings and show the log, so I can see that uh, see exactly what's being entered, because what you enter into the MDI is what will appear in the log, as well as the results. So I'm going to rearrange things so I can see the log on the left, MDI screen on the right. If I type in M3S6000, it's going to basically say start the spindle running at 6,000 RPMs. Now, since 5,500 is basically when the uh, shop back and our, and our IoT relay will trigger the shop back and turn it on, I went ahead and unplugged it just so we don't have to hear that noise. But if I hit send, we'll notice that the spindle automatically turns on. Now the lower RPMs, the, the more the variance in the speed. Now if we jump that up to M3S12,000, it goes up to 12,000 and you notice that variance is quite a bit lower. Hit M5 and that will stop the spindle and once it goes below a certain voltage, it will automatically trigger the blinking, which is the stopped mode. So no longer do you have to hit the run and stop buttons. If Hopefully that was helpful. Installing the pigtail onto the Warthog controller so that you can have automatic control of your RPMs and your start and stop right there on your VFD in order to control your spindle. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or reach out to us at support at pwncnc.com and we've got an entire team ready to help you out. And yeah, don't forget, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.